Poland takes advantage of the turmoil in Russia during its civil war to occupy large areas of mixed Polish-Russian ethnicity. While the Soviets win control of Russia, they dispute Józef Piłsudski's ambitions for a greater Poland, but are nonetheless caught off guard by his offensive towards Kiev in April to May. The offensive is brought down by logistical shortcomings, and Mikhail Tukhachevsky's counteroffensive, which brings the Soviets to the gates of Warsaw itself. The Soviets are surviving mostly off the land thus far, so any halt is dangerous, but the Poles are struggling to find ammunition for their multicultural weaponry received from many cautious vendors. Polish victory would create chaos in the Soviet supply system and force a withdrawal, saving Warsaw and Poland from Soviet ambitions. A Soviet victory would overthrow the Polish government and reveal Germany to Soviet pressure and possibly conquest. Piłsudski deploys his force in four armies across strong river lines in defense of the Polish capital. Third Army is also shown, but is officially placed under the Polish southern sector, which also includes two more armies even further south. Tukhachevsky also deploys his force in four armies. Twelfth Army is also shown, but is officially placed under direct command of Yegorov, along with two other Soviet armies further south. However, Tukhachevsky and Yegorov conflict when it comes to overall strategy of the war, and so Twelfth Army does not cooperate with Tukhachevsky. Although Pilsudski does not realize how weak the Mosier group, opposing his second army, really is, he resolves to attack the Soviet left wing and roll up the Soviet line. His staff sternly advise an attack on the Soviet right flank to remove the threat to Warsaw by the bulk of the Soviet force. Tukhachevsky meanwhile attempts to suddenly overwhelm Warsaw with attacks by 3rd, 4th, and 15th armies. The Soviet 3rd and 15th armies force the Polish back to their final defenses, while the Soviet 15th Army is repelled. Pilsudski's staff urges him to launch his offensive prematurely, but he compromises. He still reinforces 4th Army with units from 3rd Army, but promises to launch his offensive slightly earlier. The Soviet Mosier group disintegrates as the Polish 4th Army advances aggressively under the personal direction of Pilsudski. When it encounters no resistance, Pilsudski senses a terrible trap and advances cautiously until he finds the Soviet 16th Army en route. The Soviet 16th Army is retreating in disarray out of fear for their left flank before the attack even comes. Tukhachevsky's headquarters is 480 kilometers away in Minsk so he is unable to comprehend the irreversible rout of his 16th army. Nonetheless, he issues intelligible orders that are received either never or late and ignored altogether. Meanwhile, Pilsudski arrives in Warsaw to personally direct the counter-offensive to remove the threat to the capital. Polish 3rd and 2nd armies move toward each other to form a defensive line against any action by Yi Gorov, which never occurs anyway. The Polish 4th army continues its drive north while the 1st army thrusts northeast. The Polish 5th Army uses its handful of armored and motorized vehicles to cut off the Soviet 4th Army from the 15th Army. Shuvayev allows this to happen when he finally receives Tukhachevsky's orders, thinks them to be outdated, and attacks the Polish 5th Army's flank before realizing the mistake and retreating northwest. The entire Soviet army continues to flee with the Polish army close behind, which captures stragglers and the vast majority of Soviet equipment. Meanwhile, the Soviet 4th Army is unable to escape east and instead flees north into Prussia, where the entire army is interned and disarmed shortly after. The Polish pursuit of the Soviet mass ended halfway to Minsk, when Tukhachevsky rallied them to defend a long front stretching north-south. Although the Battle of Warsaw was a decisive check to Soviet advances, the Poles still had to defeat them in three more major battles in a two-month offensive that was ended only by an armistice. The Treaty of Riga in 1921 allowed Poland to annex all territorial claims from Russia. This animation was created by Jonathan Webb and narrated by Marushka Rodriguez. For more great battles, visit www.theartofbattle.com. It's like a museum, except not boring.